Hello everybody, happy Tuesday. Hope your day is uh, off to a great, great start. Uh, thanks for joining us today for Virtual Club Live. I'm Josh Peterson and we're here broadcasting live from the Boys and Girls Clubs of Benjamin Franklin County's Music and Arts Center in the glorious, the very beautiful downtown Kennewick. So excited that you're here with us today. We've got a great show coming up today on Virtual Club Live. Get ready to move them feet. We got another breakdancing video here. Adrian is going to show us how to do a super popular move called the Kip Step. Lots of fancy footwork in this video. A lot of fun that you can do uh, at home with just a little bit of space. Plus, Nathan uh, is back with another music education video. All guitarists, young aspiring guitarists. Uh, this is the video for you. He's going to break down how to play four really popular and simple chords. Plus, uh, safety first here for this video, but Walter is going to show us a really fun DIY bottle cap shooter video uh, that you can make at home with just a couple of supplies. And our weekly challenge, our new one, kicks off today, and it's a sports one. John here is going to show us some fundamental basketball drills that you can do, and we want to see your best shooting skills for this week's challenge. More on that in a bit. But first, we want to give a big shout out to everybody over in Prosser. They are celebrating 10 years. They're turning 10 years old this month, and to celebrate, community leaders are raising money for club kids. The person who collects the most decides who will be sent to the dunk tank on August 31st. Yes, look at all these beautiful faces out there. One of them is going to get dunked. Who's it going to be? Donate, uh, and uh, you'll have a say in that. Also, some awesome news coming out of the Prosser School District. Check this out. They are donating school supplies uh, to all kids in the district. Really, really awesome uh, opportunity there. Uh, the supplies are going to be issued uh, during device checkout later this month, and the school district just really wants to help out families uh, who are in need and might need some school supplies. So a big thank you uh, to the Prosser School District, and that's an awesome opportunity for all youth there in Prosser. All right, now from school supplies, we're going to go to home supplies, uh, things that you might have at home to make a DIY project. Walter here is going to break down a really cool bottle cap shooter that you can make at home. A lot of fun, but safety first with this one, but it's a lot of fun. Check it out. Hey, uh, Walter here. Today we're going to show you how to make a DIY sharp shooter. And this is what you need to make your sharpshooter. You're going to need some pieces of wood, rubber bands, nail, pencil, bottle caps, caps, ruler, handsaw, hammer, and a safety goggle. All right, now let's build it. Okay, first thing uh, we do, I use about a foot long piece of wood right here, 12 inches, and then uh, these, of course, are other pieces. What I'm going to start with is put the nail first. Now, what we're going to do is grab about three rubber bands. I'm going to fold them. I'm going to Now this one's gonna go right in between. Okay. Then this little piece is gonna go right in the back. Make sure uh, you have plenty of tension. If you feel it's too soft, don't be afraid to add one more rubber band because what can happen when you put your uh, bottle cap, sometimes it won't have enough pre uh, tension and it won't, won't stay. For the rubber bands in front, make sure, uh, I'm gonna put two right now, but you can add more if you want to, if you want more, uh, more tension. More rubber bands, more tension, so it means you're gonna have a stronger shot. So, the two rubber bands are just perfect. Okay. Now, we're gonna shoot it.
Well, there you have it. I hope you enjoyed this video. I would love to see uh, if you guys make your own uh, sharpshooter, but make sure you are, have uh, safety first. Make sure you uh, are not shooting, pointing at nobody's face, okay? So have fun, enjoy it, and see you next time. All right, thanks for that awesome and super creative <laughs> DIY bottle cap uh, project, Walter. We so appreciate it. And we're going to get creative with some art here with Jesse. How are you yep. doing? I'm doing great. How are you? I'm doing good. How's your week been so far? It, it's Tuesday, so it's just getting started. It's just getting started. That's <laughs> right. Well, we're here with our weekly art project. What mm -hmm. are we going to be doing today? So we are going to get a little messy. We are going to do some splat painting. Love it. Now, what is splat painting? So splat painting, <laughs> um, what we're going to basically be doing is creating some really abstract um, little pieces of art to create a bigger picture, but you get to hit things with a spoon. Oh, it doesn't get any better than that, right? Exactly. We're shooting bottle caps off, hitting mm -hmm. things with spoons. Come on, people. This it's is great. the best show ever. <laughs> <laughs> so what are some of the materials that you need for this project? Um, so you're going to need sponges, uh, paint, little cups to hold your paint in, uh, a spoon. It could be wooden, metal, plastic, whatever you have laying around, gotcha. um, paper. And you're going to want to make sure that you cover and protect any of the surfaces that you are working on and yourself because it can one. get messy yeah well that's half the fun right exactly <laughs> <laughs> all right well hope you guys are ready for this great project with jesse let's get started <laughs> Awesome. I am so excited to show you guys splat painting. So like I said before, we're just going to need a couple supplies. One of the main things that you're going to want to do is when you're working with your paint, you need to have half paint, half water. So equal parts. That way you'll create those really cool bigger splats and the sponges are able to soak up the paint better. Um, on your kitchen sponges, nothing fancy, just the really cheap ones. You can get them at the dollar store, Walmart, but you need to cut them into squares or circles that'll fit inside your paint cups. So I just cut mine maybe about a one inch by one inch and I'm just gonna go ahead and push it in. Now, the longer you leave those sponges in the paint, the more paint it'll absorb and that's gonna make a way cool splat. So I've got a couple of my uh, sponges that have been sitting in there and you can do whatever colors you want. Go ahead, just lay them all out on your paper wherever you want. All right. And like I said, you're gonna get messy in this project. All right, once you have them where you want them, using your spoon, like I said, it can be a wooden spoon, metal, plastic, um, maybe even like a small rubber mallet. You don't want anything that will break or damage the surface that you're working on. So hammers, that kind of thing, not the best. Um, I'm gonna use this wooden spoon because it gives me a nice flat surface to hit. And all you have to do is line it up and splat. And so I'm just gonna come over here. All right, and paint goes everywhere. So I'm really sorry, Josh, it's hit the floor. <laughs> This is awesome. This is so cool. <laughs> so once you do your first round of splats, you can come back in. You can add more if you want. So I'm just going to redunk. I'm going to add a purple there, blue there, just like that. And depending on how hard you hit depends on your splats. So this time I'm not going to hit as hard. Oh my God. Ready? <laughs> All right. So as you can tell, I did not hit them as hard, so the splats didn't go everywhere. Now you're probably wondering, what, what exactly can I do with this? The really cool thing is, is after this is dried, this is where your imagination can totally take over. You can create flowers, you can create aliens, you can create bugs with them. You know, maybe you get really creative and use some black paper with white, and you've got an exploding Death Star. I mean, come on. Anything is possible with these splat paintings. Lots of fun totally messy and it is just a lot of fun creativity. So I hope you guys have fun. Definitely, definitely try out this project. 
This was, this was a lot messier than I thought it was gonna be. But this is super, super cool. Yeah. This is great. Did we get anything on the electronics over? No, I think we're okay. No, we I think the little... blue just went this way. We'll, gotta, we'll call the janitor. We have one yeah. of those, right? <laughs> Sorry, Julian. <We> <laughs> This is fun. <laughs> Love the color. Uh, this is really cool. We can see it all over the place here, but uh, you know, it's all—it's part of the set, right? Exactly. It's all part of the set now, but we're not cleaning it. <laughs> we're cleaning it. No, we'll do that later. <laughs> Jesse, thank you so much. Love this project. This was great. Yeah, and like I said, total lots of fun, and you know, you get a little bit of frustration out. Absolutely, when you right? <laughs> Creative. This is healthy, mm -hmm. right? This is a healthy uh, therapeutic thing. To exactly. Do. <laughs> Maybe do it outside. Yes, that's a good idea. <laughs> Awesome. Jesse, thank you so much for being here. We super appreciate it. Uh, if you love art, we got more art projects and classes on the way. Check out this polar bear portrait chalk drawing class that's happening on Thursday. We've got two sessions available. This is a free class uh, geared toward K through sixth grade youth. Length is about 45 minutes to an hour. You can pick the time that works best for you, 11 a.m. or 3 p.m. Uh, you can go to tricitiesmac.org to register for this free class. Also, something else coming up soon, we have got DIY science classes with Jesse happening next Monday, August 17th. We got this first class happening at 11 a.m. for K through third grade youth, a chemical reaction class, learn how to make a penny green. Then at 1 p.m. doing a class for fourth through seventh grade kids doing volcano fizzy slime um, at 1 p.m. that class. So looking forward to these two classes, going to be a lot, a lot, a lot, one more time, a lot of fun. <laughs> well, from DIY projects to art classes and art projects, let's switch gears now into some music. Uh, guitar kids out there, kids uh, interested in learning to play an instrument, learning guitar chords, uh, working on guitar tabs, things like that. Nathan here's got a great guitar educational video for you on how to play four common chords. Check it out. Hey guys, it's Nathan. Today we are learning how to play four common chords on guitar. Why would you want to know this? These chords are very applicable to a lot of popular music today. Many beginners want to be able to play along to their favorite music or to just make their own song. Learning these four chords will open up your creative possibilities and introduce you to the basics of guitar. All right, well, let's get into it. So the first chord we are learning is gonna be E minor. You're gonna take your, your middle finger and put it on the second fret of the fifth string. And then you're gonna take your ring finger and put it on the second fret of the fourth string. And then you're gonna strum all six strings at the same time, and it's gonna sound like this. All right, the next chord we are learning is gonna be C major. We're gonna start off by taking our pointer finger and putting it on the first fret of the second string. Then you're gonna take your middle finger and put it on the second fret of the fourth string. And then you're gonna take your ring finger and put it on the third fret of the fifth string. In order to play this, you only play the five, the bottom five strings. So you're gonna leave out this top E string. It's gonna sound like this. All right, our next chord is gonna be G major. So we're gonna take our pinky finger and put it on the third fret of the bottom string. Then we're gonna take our pointer finger and put it on the second fret of the fifth string. Then we're gonna take our middle finger and put it on the third fret of the sixth string. And you're gonna strum all six strings. It's gonna sound like this. Sweet, and now our last chord that we're learning is gonna be D major. In order to play this, you need to put your middle finger on the second fret of the first string. And you're gonna put your ring finger on the third fret of the second string. 
and you're gonna take your pointer finger and put it on the second fret of the third string. And we're only gonna play the bottom four strings, so we're gonna leave out the top two. It's gonna sound like this. Great, so these four chords can be arranged into different orders that are very similar to a lot of popular music today. For example, I made a cover of the song Cheap Thrills by Sia using these four chords. Here it is. Alright guys, the hardest part about learning these chords is being able to change chords fast. It takes a lot of memorization and practice to switch between them with ease. So I encourage you to um, take your time and learn how to transition from one chord to the next over and over again until speed is achieved. But that's going to be all for today guys, I'll see you next time. All right, thanks Nathan for that great explanation video. If you're interested in uh, learning how to play guitar, a great one for you there. Also, if you're learning uh, an instrument, interested in learning how to play a new instrument, check out our virtual music lessons. Uh, we're doing one-on-one -on -one virtual lessons Monday through Thursday for K through 12 kids of all experience levels. First lesson is totally free. You can register at tricitiesmac.org. We're doing private lessons on piano, guitar, uh, and drum set. Uh, so if you're interested in learning one of those instruments, uh, please check it out. Uh, we'd love to connect with you virtually uh, and help you out with some great music instruction. All right, well, we're going to take a quick break, and then we're going to be back with more virtual club videos, this week's challenge, and Kips step break dancing from Adrian we'll be right back for as long as we've existed boys and girls clubs has always been about coming together to support the families of our communities and do whatever it takes to give every kid a chance at a great future but we're going through a challenging time right now and while we may not all be able to come together in the same physical ways in other ways we're coming together like never before. Because that's what whatever it takes to build great futures means. It means providing a safe place to go for children whose parents are on the front lines battling the virus. It means providing millions of meals for kids who previously relied on their school or a meal program, which are now shut down. And it's about harnessing the power of technology to keep kids moving forward with their education. So yeah, whatever it takes to build great futures may mean something different right now. But whatever it is, that's exactly what we're going to keep doing. All right, we've got some great community news that we'd like to share with you right now. A great way for you to get involved with something important in our community here. The Manhattan Project National Historic Park is hosting Days of Peace and Remembrance in Observance of atomic bombings in Japan. This is the 75th anniversary uh, of those uh, atomic bombings uh, of Japan. Uh, an opportunity for you to get involved here, uh, the National Park Service is doing a Messages of Peace uh, virtual uh, event. They are soliciting origami paper cranes with messages of peace from the public. Uh, the crane project provides an opportunity to amplify the voices for peace, and will collect and share messages of peace from people around the world uh, and shared on social media as well. They'll also be archived in a time capsule to be opened on the 100th anniversary of the bombings of Nagasaki and Hiroshima. To participate, you can go to nps.gov MAPR on directions on how to do that. Also, a reminder, if you haven't seen it, we do have a virtual club video of us making paper cranes, so you can follow along on this video. Go to our YouTube page or go to our website, greatclubs.org slash virtual clubs uh, to see this video 
videos so you can learn how to make a paper crane and participate in this very important project uh, as we create uh, uh, so a more peaceful future here for our families. Also, a, another great community event that's coming up uh, real soon. This is a fun one here. Uh, if you're interested in the movies, Tri-Cities Carpool Cinema, presented by Windermere Group One and Numerica, are hosting some drive-in movie dates, the dates there for Pasco, Kennewick, and Richland. Uh, you can go to facebook.com slash Tri-Cities Carpool Cinema. Costs a couple bucks to get in, and in, the admission includes popcorn, and you can bring drinks and things like that. A great way to social distance with your family uh, and enjoy some great movies as well. Also, some good news here for the readers out there. Uh, the expanded modified phase one guidelines for Benton and Franklin counties have now okayed the opening for library uh, curbside pickup. Those curbside library services be uh, were able to be opened on August 7th. Uh, libraries here in our area are working on plans to open uh, their curbside uh, options, so you can uh, go to their websites for more information, but a great opportunity and a great way uh, for everybody to get involved and to read a book, a uh, great opportunity there. Uh, but if you want to get a little bit more active, if you want to get up and start moving, dancing away, Adrian's here. He's got you covered with the new breakdancing video called The Kip Step. Check it out. Hey everybody, Adrian here. I'm gonna be showing you a new top rock today. It's called the Kip Step. All right, now I'm gonna show you how to do it. So first thing is, you wanna be mindful of your heels. Keep your heels up the whole time you're doing the move. Now you're gonna go into the home position. You're going to cross your right foot over your left. Pick up that foot in the back, come back, and this is a key part in the move. You have to kick out with your right foot now. Switch feet, left foot comes over, right foot and the back goes up. Now again, left side, kick out. Left foot down, right foot up, over, up. Okay, now this is how it's done. Go ahead and submit your videos and photos and see what you got. All right, thanks for that great video, Adrian. I think it's our seventh breakdancing video that we've done. You can see all of them on our YouTube page or on our website as well at any time. Uh, we've got beginning to intermediate to advanced skills uh, and, and projects and breakdancing uh, challenges for you there. There's our website, greatclubs.org slash virtual club. You can check them out at any time. All right, we're gonna take a quick break and then we're gonna be back with this week's challenge winner and the new challenge announcement.
All right, it's time now to talk about our challenge winner for this last week and announce our new challenge. This last week's challenge was the Melted Crayon Art Challenge. Before we announce the winner, let's take a look at the challenge one more time. Here's Amy. Hi everybody, Amy here. We're gonna do another fun project today. So first thing I want to do is I'm going to uh, sketch my heart onto my canvas and I would like mine to be in the corner and I'm just going to do the top part of the heart. And then I'm going to find my crayons and I've got a bucket here and I've already pre-picked out some purples and yellows. So I'm going to grab those out of here. So now I'm going to take my glue gun and I'm going to glue these down. Okay. Oh, I love how that looks. So now we're going to get ready to melt these. So let's melt these crayons and see what it looks like. So I encourage you to write a positive note on your heart. I'm going to use the word grit. And um, it's said enough now that I can write that word in here. So I'm going to pencil it in first. And you can use whatever type of, uh, however you want to print it or write fancy letters. or It's totally up to you and your creativity. So there's my finished heart. And I'm also gonna show it from the top. There we go, grit. Thanks for joining, watching the video and I hope that you have fun doing this project. Make sure to get a parent to help you with this. But we'd love to see your work. I enjoy seeing all the different creativity out there. So go ahead and create and then send us a picture of what you've created. Thank you, bye-bye. All right, thanks, Amy. We've got a lot of amazing submissions for this week's challenge. Let's take a look at them right now. Loved seeing everybody's creativity with the Melted Crayon Art Challenge. Uh, super, super impressed by everybody's work. Uh, the different colors that were used, the different patterns that were used. Uh, really, really cool attention to detail uh, and incorporating other elements into the creative Melted Crayon Art design. Love, love, love seeing everybody. Thank you for submitting. There can only be one challenge winner. We want to give a big shout out to Lily Jensen. Congratulations. You are this week's virtual club challenge winner. Loved your melted crayon art uh, project here. Looks like a, a garden here. Very, very neat with the way that you turned the, the crayons into the, these grass and these leaves with the butterflies and the flowers in the air as well. Really appreciate that. Thank you. Thank you so much. You are winning that $25 gift card from Buy You Some Cajun. So a big shout out to you and a big shout out to everybody else who submitted as well. All right, now let's talk about this week's new virtual club challenge. John here is going to talk about basketball shooting fundamentals. Um, here he is. Hey guys, how's it going? John here. Today we're going to be going over fundamental shooting for basketball. So today I'm gonna to show you three basic fundamental shooting drills that you can do, either if you're a beginner, an advanced one, or an intermediate ball player. You just wanna work on your shooting skills as far as basics go. So the first one I'm gonna be doing, I'm gonna show you today, is called form shooting. 
So you're gonna take your opposite hand. So if your left hand, then your right hand will go behind your back. But if you're right-handed, your left hand will go behind your back in this drill. So you will take your left hand, feet evenly spaced, ball out in front of you just like this. Then you're gonna bring it in till your arms at a 90 degree angle. And then you're gonna bend your legs, follow through. So it's real important that when you're shooting this drill, that hand goes up just like that, hand in a cookie jar, coming right back down into that L shape. So again, we're gonna take the ball out in front of us just like this, bring it in, bend those legs, follow through. Now the next one I'm gonna do, this is you're gonna incorporate the balance hand. So again, if you're a left-handed shooter, your balance hand would then be your right hand. If you're a right-handed shooter, your balance hand is gonna be your left hand. So it's real important, so let's for instance say I'm a right-handed shooter, okay? Again, you're gonna start with the ball out just like this, bring it in, that balance hand is gonna go on the side of the ball, just like this, not in front, because when you have it in front, it's gonna give resistance and you can't get your shot off. So again, balance hand, side of the ball. So it's gonna look just like this. And you wanna make sure that when you're shooting that ball, that balance hand comes off right at the top of your release. So the third and final basic drill I'm gonna show you today, it's called Euro style shooting. And this drill is really good to incorporate those first two basic drills that we went through today. So again, making sure that your arms nice and tight to your chest, feet or shoulder width apart, and then that balance hand over here on the side of the ball. So it's gonna look just like this. One, two, three, up. Hey, I hope you guys enjoyed this uh, video today. Again, these are three basic drills that you can do to improve as a shooter or just to improve as an overall basketball player. I would love to see some clips or maybe some video of you guys doing this. So please, please, please send them our way. Have a great day. All right, thanks, John. So here's the deal, everybody. Y'all know how to shoot a basket, ball into the basket, that's this week's challenge. You don't need to do one of those drills, but it'd be great if you watch the video to learn uh, some of these things. But we want to see you shoot a basketball. That's it. Send a video of yourself shooting a basketball. This can be in your driveway at a park. Maybe you've got one of those Fisher Price little uh, toddler basketball hoops at home, like me. Um, that's what I practice on every night. Get a video of yourself, your kids doing that. We want to see videos of you guys shooting basketball uh, hoops here. Uh, bonus points for trick shots. Send those videos to virtualatgreatclubs.org. The deadline is next Monday, the 17th at 11.59. We're going to announce the winner next Tuesday, the 18th at 10 a.m. The winner of this week's challenge, going to get a jolt! $25 gift card from Starbucks. Um, we appreciate them and all their great support. Um, so big shout out to Starbucks. So uh, participate in that challenge, be entered to win this great gift card as well. Plus we've got a great educational opportunity for if you're interested in a basketball education, John is hosting a sports training virtual course tomorrow, all about basketball shooting at 1 p.m. Uh, this is going to be about 45 minutes long for grades two through eight. You can register at greatclubs.org slash virtual club or email virtual at greatclubs.org. This is a, uh, a Zoom class. We'll need to send you the Zoom information, but this is 100% free. So looking forward to this class tomorrow at 1 p.m. All right, hope you had a lot of fun with us today here at Virtual Club Live. To see content at any time, you can go to our Instagram page or our YouTube, Virtual BGC BFC is what you can search for. That's Boys and Girls Clubs of Benton and Franklin Counties. Also a reminder, some great resources from our national organization. You can go to bgca.org or clubexperience.blog blog for some of the great things that they have over there. Thanks for joining us today for Virtual Club Live. Had a lot of fun, got a little messy. We got to clean up this studio a little bit after Jesse's art project, but a ton of fun. Very, uh, very uh, fun. Uh, have a great day. We'll see you guys next Tuesday for Virtual Club Live. Have a great week. Bye.